I, would, uh, I was telling my mom that I was going to do a, a TED talk, and uh, she's like, is it going to be weird to stand in front of people and not make them laugh? And I said, Mom, you must have forgot about the beginning of my career. Uh, there was a lot of TED talks going on then. How I use stand-up as a keynote speaker. I fell in love with stand-up comedy in the mid-80s, and I'm still a devout fan four decades later. As a teenager, I was drawn to the storytelling, imagery, and rhythm. It was clever. It was controversial. It was honest. It made me laugh. It made me think. It made me question. Stand-up comedians were oratory savants. I would never have guessed that 35 years later, I would find inspiration from George Carlin, Richard Pryor and Steve Martin and use their unique comedic genius to help me level up as a corporate keynote speaker. Fast forward to Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K. and Brian Regan and I continue to consistently study stand-up comedy to this day to help me improve my storytelling, my improvisation, my timing, my tone, and my physicality when I'm on stage. Stand-up comedy has made me a better professional speaker. I would say Rehearse the shit out of it because you're going to get frazzled up there. Everybody thinks, oh, this is good material. But you also forget about the other part of delivering it, having confidence, being likable, having timing, having a cadence, figuring out who you are, figuring out what the audience thinks you are or how they perceive you. Bombing is not failure. It's just data. It's going, oh, okay, I got to re retool that. That didn't work. Something's wrong there. They, I missed a word there. So you got to treat the, uh, the act almost like... Uh, like uh, like ingredients in a, in, a, in a cooking, in a dish, you know? Like, oh, that I put too many eggs in. Take an egg out. You got to treat it like that and just almost be a robot and just keep going. I'd like to explain to you how life works, at least from a comedian's perspective. First, there's a setup, and then there's a punchline. Your setup is your talents, your resources, and your opportunities. And most of the time, we use our setup to ensure that the people around us are moving in a direction that serves us. Which means the punchline occurs when you change that direction in a way they're not expecting. How many people here know what your setup is? Every one of you would be able to tell me. Because your setup is the fact that you have a house, a car, you've been married, you went to school. Your setup is about what you've received. But what if I ask the question, what is your punchline? Because your punchline is about what you're called to deliver. And if you only know your setup and not your punchline, you'll make the mistake of trying to add more setup. If I could just get another degree, if I could just get married, if I could just lose weight. But what you really need is to know your punchline. Again, because to know your setup and not your punchline is an uncomfortable place to live. Your setbacks are part of your setup so you can deliver the punchline you're called to deliver. Much like a slingshot, the further you've been set back, the further you're going to reach. But what are you gonna aim for? Everyone has a setup and everyone has a punchline. You need to find your punchline and deliver it.